Now, the Home International is coming up uh, shortly and uh, it's going to be fished in Brennig in Wales. Now, the Dabla style fly, uh, or the Dabla, works extremely well on Brennig. Now, I do get asked to tie a lot of flies uh, for competition anglers and so that I don't stand in anyone's toes to it, I think, because there's so many secret flies and all that, but a really good fly uh, is in or one I would tie anyway. If you go into the, the full mill catalogue, uh, where is it? I find it there. Is this one here? Is the the straggler Kate McLaren uh, one? It's a version of it. It's basically got the bronze mallard wing, but a straggle UV straggle body with a sunburst tail. Now the UV uh, straggle, or in this case, what I like to tie it with uh, if you've got it is. This one's got the pearl flash in it. You can either have the UV or the pearl, and both work extremely well. And this is Straggle Fritz. This goes a way, way back, uh, basically to when I was sort of writing for Trout and Salmon. And this was originally called Long Hair Fritz, and it came from Turl. And they, I called it, people asked me what it was, and I just I said it was just a straggle like Fritz. And then so that's how the name got around. And uh, but originally it was just a plain colour. The reason it works so well in many lures and such is that the straggle is woven within the uh, the core of the the fritz. It's very shiny. But if you can get the pearl or the UV, both work extremely well. Now the fly is reasonably simple to tie, and as this, you can do a, a like a booby version as well, can booby eyes on it. The booby style fly allows you to control other flies as much as it takes fish and in the competition of angling that that's, means it's a good fishing fly it works well and uh, allows you to fish different methods but hook choice it's up to yourself again this is a very popular hook now there's a full and mill it's a competition heavyweight and black nickel and so it's a colour of fly as well in size 10 10s and 12s are two good sizes thread I'm just going to use the uni thread uh, in this case, as you'll see, is in the 8-0. Just put down a layer of thread. Now, you do need a, a layer of thread down. Nice and tight. Now, you, what I'm going to do here is remove the waist piece and stop in line with the point of the hook. Now, you could go further back to the barb, but in competitions tends to happen is because, obviously, you still want to catch and release the bend of the hook comes in port and then that you, you can actually get a hold of the hook and let it go and uh, re release your fish it's much easier without destroying the fly if you take a fly further back there's you'll burst the back of the fly and by keeping it slightly short and then the style makes makes sense that like you can then release the fish without damaging your fly and damaging the, uh, the fish as much as well now tail there's a sunburst this is sunburst marabou dyed marabou now the Cape McLaren can be tied normally and you can put the sunburst tail on it and the marabou or just there's a normal uh, crest tail. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pick the best part of the marabou. So I'm nice and like a bit of colour. So I break the tips to line them up. Now if you're working within international rules it has to be within 15 sixteenths of an inch the full length of the fly. So you've really got to make and watch your length. Now, a guide usually for me is the, the shank of the hook is a tail. So if we go by that, it should be fine. Two or three turns to hold. Then we trim it full length of the body. We've got a straggle. We tie this on. Now, it's naturally laying back this way, so that's the way I'm going to tie it on, so much easier to wind up. Catch this in. Again, try and keep it the full length of the body. Nice and tight, so wax on my thread, gives me the grip. So what are we up? I see it's reasonably simple fly. It's just basically a mini lure with bronze wing. Uh, so what we do then, we can then, what we, we do with a hackle, we, we stroke back the fibres and we wind up. Now we can keep this as sparse as we like or as heavy as we want, it's up to yourself, you can be nice and tight touching tons of the material on the way up, stroking back the fibre 
to this point here, you look a good mil, mil and a half, two mil from the eye. Now make a space. Now you want some of this, some of the fibres up the top, so don't be shy with pulling some of it into the dressing, coming down and catching it in. So a couple of turns over the back to get it started. Nice and tight. Now most of these fits are quite bulky, so you just come in with it really inside of those scissors, nice and tight. Trim away. I've got wax on my thread. Stroke back the fibres. Hold them with your nail if you have to. And then we're ready for our bronze mallard. You see a lot of movement in the fly. And then we're ready as I say for our bronze mallard. Now I've got a medium sized feather here. Reasonably well marked. Take away the fluff at the bottom. Now what I like to do is bring out enough form the wing. You could cloak this, I mean you could wrap the, the bronze mallard round the fly. Now once we lined up the tips by just bringing it so mainly 90 degrees from the, from the stem we can then tear it away and usually set that on my desk. Now for the throat we can pull out some, again we can line them up. The further up you go the more likely that the, the fibres want to come apart so as I throw it it's much better to use end times. And then tear it off. Now we've got the natural shape of the or curve of the fibre. So I'm going to offer this underneath. Now you could set it, turn your hook upside down. Now it's as long and short as you want it to be. Now I like it obviously shorter than the wing. So I would basically be happy towards the barb or the point of the hook. You can pinch and loop this on two or three turns and then position it. They have waxed the thread, so there's plenty of grip there. Trim away the waist, and rotate the foot the waist back round. Use just a wee bit more wax on my thread. Go back to my bronze mallard. We pulled off earlier, get my length. Again, to separate the movement of the fly, I'm slightly less, don't go as full length. Don't go all the way back to the tail. Come in maybe, say, a third of the way from the end, so we look at our length there. Now I'm going to basically fold this, so I'm going to squeeze it, fold it like that, pinch on top, nice and tight. You've got to do that nice and tight. And then we can trim this away. Again, we touch a wax on my thread, come to the eye of the hook, and work the turns up onto the cut ends. Much easier to do that than working down the way because. If you work down the way, it's going to slip all the time. This way, you're basically building a step up, up onto the material, keeping it straight, nice and tight. Sorry, then we can work finish. Don't be shy of a decent size head. There, don't mind the head on the fly. Gives it a nice profile. Trim that away. And like fly tying, we always have one. You can see tiny wee bit of pearl there sticking forward. The eye, we can always trim that away. It's not too bad at that, usually, you can get one or two more. And then, for speed, for me, this is the full mill super glue. Just touch the head. If you can, rotate your vise. Don't want this running into the fibre. Just work your way around. I know this is not everyone's cup of tea, uh, but in competition angling, this is a good wee pattern. They allow that to dry, and it dries quick. Then you can have a couple of coats of varnish after that. And that there is a good fly for Brennick. There's a, the Sunburst, or in this case, the, the Straggler Kate McLaren. Uh, good pattern. So it could be it's a lure light fly. Uh, as I say, you could even put hack on the front, but even baby eyes, it'll still work. So I hope you enjoyed that. <laughs>